I would like to discuss a common injury that can be confusing to athletes and parents. Concussions. Let me start with the basics. A concussion is an injury to the brain. And like other injuries, like an ankle sprain, which we can see bruising and swelling, a concussion is an injury we cannot actually see. A concussion can occur from a small bump to the head and does not have to happen with a loss of consciousness. We know an athlete sustains a concussion by symptoms they describe, signs that they physically show, and with the help of cognitive testing. A cognitive test, like impact, gives us details on thought process, memory, attention, and reaction speed. Basically, how your brain works with everyday tasks. Signs and symptoms of a concussion can include headache, dizziness, feeling of being in a fog, confusion, nausea, memory loss, and even emotional changes. Despite our best efforts to identify a concussion as soon as it happens, symptoms may not be present until sometime after the initial impact. Therefore, it is important that an athlete be monitored for symptoms hours after a significant hit to the head. A concussion can alter the way an athlete feels and acts. It can also be very dangerous if not treated properly. Post-concussion syndrome is when an athlete has symptoms that last longer than the normal healing time. An uncommon but very serious condition called second impact syndrome can occur if an athlete returns to play while they are still experiencing symptoms of a concussion. Most athletes will recover from a concussion within three weeks and will be back to sport without any prolonged symptoms. It is important for athletes and parents to report any signs or symptoms of a concussion to the athletic trainer at their school. By law, any youth athlete that has a suspected concussion must be immediately pulled from sport and not returned to activity until cleared by a doctor. Let's say a 16-year-old cheerleader during practice falls and the coach suspects a concussion. She is referred to the athletic trainer at the school and an initial concussion evaluation is done. The athletic trainer will speak with the parents and refer her to a doctor. The athletic trainer will also inform the coach and the school that she has a concussion. Academics can be affected with a concussion, so it is important that everyone involved in your athlete's academics is in the loop. This way, any modifications to schoolwork, tests, and studying can be made. After the athlete is evaluated and diagnosed with a concussion, she is not allowed to participate in any physical activity. The best thing she can do to recover is to rest. I suggest that she may need a few days out of school and to avoid playing video games, texting on her phone, avoid any loud noises, and even to limit her TV watching. These things can make a concussion symptom much worse. School's athletic trainer will ask that she completes a signs and symptoms checklist every day. This shows us what signs and symptoms she has and the progression of her recovery. Now, let's say she rested and three days after her injury, her symptoms have all resolved. After she has been symptom-free for 24 hours, she speaks with the athletic trainer at the school and we use a return to activity protocol. The protocol is a gradual five-step process. The steps are light aerobic activity, moderate exercise, non-contact exercise, practice of the sport, and finally, return to competition. If during any of these stages she experiences return of symptoms, she will rest for 24 hours or until her symptoms are gone. Once our cheerleader has progressed through moderate exercise and she is doing great and symptom-free, we would like her to take a post-injury neurocognitive test. The impact test is commonly used. The athletic trainers and school nurses have access to this test, and athletes can make an appointment with them to take the test at school. At this stage, we would like her to see her doctor. She will need to have an evaluation before she continues to the next stage, which would be non-contact exercise. After she is symptom-free and her doctor has cleared her to progress, she can begin non-contact practice and longer activity periods. She will progress to full participation under the supervision of the athletic trainer and her doctor. It is important during the whole progression that the athlete avoids any activity that increases their chance of another head injury. If she is still having symptoms from her concussion, her return to play may be modified. This might include prolonged stages or requiring more rest. Every athlete varies in their progression after a concussion, and each protocol should be individualized for that athlete. After she has participated in non-contact practice, the athletic trainer, parent, athlete, and doctor will communicate on a final clearance to participate. If she has been cleared for full return to activity, the doctor will send a letter of clearance to the athletic trainer, and she has completed her full return of activity and is safe to participate in sports. 
Concussions can be a serious injury. They are injuries to the brain, just like one can have injuries to joints or bones, and even though we can't see or feel them, concussions may take just as long or even longer to heal. From all of us at the Stedman Clinic and the Stedman Philippon Research Institute, good luck with the upcoming sports season, stay healthy, and stay safe. For more information, the following websites offer a great resource on concussions.